Okay, everyone, I'm excited about this video. It's gonna be riffs number nine. And uh, like I said, I keep getting excited about doing more and more of these, but uh, I think we might cap it off at 10, just because it's a nice round number. So uh, I thought I'd experiment a little bit, experiment a little bit with this one and have some cool camera movement stuff. And I don't know, I'm just having fun here. All right, let's go ahead and give it a shot. We have about 27 more riffs happening here, and these are all the ones that have given me the biggest rush in my life. And let's start off with the little Foo Fighters. <laughs> I once had a student that wanted to put together a band and play a couple songs for a talent show and I was playing drums and he chose the song Breed and I'm glad he did because it's such an energetic song and I loved it ever since. Here we go. I was about five years old when this song was big, I, mean, I don't remember, but this riff stuck with me and I always wanted to play it on guitar and it wasn't until recently that I finally learned it. I didn't know what to do during that crazy part, so I just did a quick tap. The chaos at the end of this song is my favorite thing about it, how the riff just keeps repeating. And there's like this noise that bubbles up and it just keeps getting crazier and crazier. And uh, here we go, one of the coolest Beatles songs of all time. When I was a kid, my dad bought a moped and he used to let me ride it around the house because I couldn't take it on the streets. So I would ro ride it around the house. I actually made like a track track marks all around the house. I'm surprised he let me do that. But the song that kept repeating in my head was a pretty obvious one, Born to be Wild. So here we go. <laughs> I had to choose this next riff because the drumming part was so fun to play, but also the riff just supercharges me and you'll probably see why. When I was an angsty teen, for some reason this riff really spoke to me. I think it's the pick scrapes. This is more of the Stevie Wonder mixed with Stevie Ray Vaughan, the Stevie's version of this riff. Another mashup of artists, let's do Michael Jackson meets Alien Ant Farm. <music> Tech 
Testament always has the coolest riffs. It's not quite as cool as the bass part in the beginning, but I love this riff. So this song used to be on the radio all the time when I was a kid, and I love the sound of it. And it's more bass heavy, so there's more of a bass lick in this part, but I'm gonna go ahead and play a little bit of it on the guitar too. And of course, Rage Against the Machine always grooves. Man, those tool riffs, I always take their toll on me. Last time I tried to do a jambi in my video and I couldn't get the drums right. So that one was a lot of effort, but worth it. Okay, let's move on. That's gonna have to be milk toast. If you're not into the band Kiss, first of all, how dare you? But second of all, you gotta check out Black Diamond. That one always seems to win people over, especially this riff. Okay, you probably know things are about to get heavy when the last Paul comes out. I like to use it for my drop tunings because the neck is so stable. It seems to uh, be the one to go to. Slipknot is always fun to play on the drums, obviously, but the guitar part in this one's fun because you get to do those really crazy squeals. So let's see if we can get those out of this guitar. Oh. 
Did you see my finger just like flick right off the string at the end? It kind of did it in time, so I think I'm just gonna leave it. Being from Minnesota, Prince has always been a huge influence on me. And my cousin brought over Purple Rain and we just listened to uh, this intro a whole bunch and it really just stuck with me. And I think it's part of the reason I play guitar today because I love the sound of it. <laughs> I just make stuff up at the end. I just hope the octave pedal and the fuzz covers it up enough. Okay, here's the synth riff that always gets me and uh, Marilyn Manson redid it. So I'm gonna kind of do a mashup between the two. So Eurythmics meets Manson. And for the last one, I'm just going to go back to the old synth that I just bought. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of jump, and I'm actually going to play the end part finally this time. So here we go. Okay, everyone, thanks for watching Riffs Volume 9. Uh, expect 10 to be out sometime. I don't know, this one took a lot of practice. So uh, probably going to be in about two weeks, up to a month, we'll see. But between that time, we're going to be doing a lot of lesson videos. So I'm pretty excited about that. And maybe an artist series finally. I've been working on two of them, but there's a lot to learn from these guys. So we'll catch you then. All right, thanks. Bye.